Hello, Anarchapoco. My name is Jim Gale, and I'm going to take you on a tour of Galt's Landing here in Central Florida, where we are demonstrating freedom every day. Check out the wild turkeys in the back. Isn't that beautiful? We are creating a habitat for life, for an abundance of life. And the animals, the birds, the bees, the food, it'll be an explosion of abundance that we create right here at Galt's Landing. And it starts with declaring our freedom. So this sign here at the front gate basically says implied consent is not granted. No government official is allowed to step foot on this property unless they are invited. Now let's go inside. Oh, one more thing. Check out the flag. So there are three recognized flags in the United States. There is the war flag with the yellow trim, or there's the captured flag with the yellow trim. There's the war flag that we're all used to, and then there's the civil peace flag. So we fly under the civil peace flag, yet we are very well prepared for whatever may come. So we recognize that there is a food supply chain disaster. The food supply chain has been weaponized. So right here, outside of our gates we are putting in a garden for the community we're going to be putting plants that are easily propagatable sweet potatoes are number one you can eat the leaves the stems and the roots and people are going to be able to come here and they're going to be able to take the sweet potato starts and also juca and banana and cassava and all sorts of things that that go fast and also and this is going to be really cool the students at the school that we are bringing in, they're gonna be helping to maintain and manage the food supply here. Look at the size of this grapefruit. My gosh, <laughs> look at that. Isn't that amazing? So this tree is only six months in the ground. We've designed this parking area so you can come in and you can park and be surrounded by fruit tree guilds. This is our area, we call it our Modern Homestead or Freedom Farm Academy. So instead of using lawns like most places do, and by the way, it's an Airbnb. If you wanna come and stay here at Galt's Landing, please do. We've got an incredible Airbnb model. And instead of using lawns, everything here is functional and edible. Again, we are completely off grid. We create all of our own food, water, and energy is on site. We don't need anything from anybody else. If the zombie apocalypse comes, we can shut the gates. We are very well prepared. And the ultimate protection we have is service to our community. So we provide so much extra that we become the food supply for the community. And what's gonna happen then? The community is gonna protect us. We happen to be at the end of a private road or at the end of a five mile road this area here is all surrounded by nature. In fact, we're on a private 430 acre lake. We've got a mile long paved runway to our east. And the intention of this is world leaders, the new leaders, the leaders that we want to be here are going to be coming to God's Landing to learn what freedom's all about. And it's already happening. Oh, yeah, let's cut through this way. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, look at those new leaves coming in. There's so, this is a little guild here. We've got mint. Have, this is a great way to start the day. We've got comfrey, an incredible medicinal and dynamic accumulator. We've got perennial peanut, another incredible plant that actually fixes nitrogen in the soil. So in this one area here, you can see from this corner, and then look at the basils, all the way down to this end here, there are about 73 different food producing plants in this little area. That's freaking amazing. This could be a lawn, and guess what? This is less maintenance than a lawn. We've done nothing once we designed it and installed it. We've done nothing since, except for we have it on a regular irrigation timer. 
and now it's just providing life in abundance. What do you see? Oh, look at the bee. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? She's an early starter. That's awesome. We're gonna see if there's any red ones. The Jamaican cherry tree. There's a bunch of fruit coming on here. You can see those babies. Isn't that amazing? And guava and avocado and ophthalmoja and um, about 40 different types of food growing right here. Look at the mango and ice cream beans. Peaches. Oh, electric culture. So this is an electric culture device. Copper wound around a bamboo pole stuck into the ground and somehow that um, is there, there's an, a transfer of energy from the ether and there's gonna be a lot more about that than I'm gonna share look at this is cranberry hibiscus and pineapple right here this is a cherry and this is our outdoor kitchen again this is all brand new after this we're gonna go to another area that's been in the ground about 16 months but all the spices and different types of things for cooking. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna put a, a roofing structure on this and we're gonna have classes. I'm gonna learn how to cook because I don't know how to cook yet, but that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna bring, bring professionals in and I'm gonna learn how to cook on camera so we can take this whole thing full circle. What do you think? These are our little one bedroom units. When you come, there will be honey from our beehives and there will be eggs and there'll be other fruit from the farm right here. And you can go harvest every morning. You can go harvest your own eggs. You can harvest your own salads, your own, your own foods from the property and that's included in the stay. Isn't that awesome? Completely off grid. These are Monstera Deliciosa. They, they will go up, like you put them at the base of a, a tree and they'll go up and they'll cover the tree. And so we're gonna be putting a trellis here. So these will actually go up on the trellis over a couple of year period and they will create shade and, and kind of a, a privacy for the door. And then one of my favorites, lemongrass. Oh, it's amazing. Look at the strawberries and the mangoes, Jabba de Kaba. And this, this is our amphibian theater or the amphitheater. It's absolutely amazing what, when McKinley and I were here and it was the first rain of the year and we dug this little hole to create habitat and the, the sounds, the thousands of, of frogs and crickets and all this stuff started exploding to life so when you come here and you stay you can come come out here at night and it's it's like the most incredible symphony that you'll hear and we put the water hyacinth in the water to clean up the water and now we've all of these a lot of yellows and golds and purples are going to be coming up here and it's just going to support so much life and then we're going to use the water from the pond which has fish in it we stocked it and that water is going to fertigate, to fertilize and irrigate the plants and the, the crops around here. <laughs> now, <laughs> look at that. Yes. So this whole area here is going to be a healing center. We're working with some amazing people to create a healing center and a community. And McKinley's team, New Energy World, we're gonna go over and see some houses, steel frame construction, but that's this whole area is going to be a food forest with healing center. And right here, this is a school. This is a school called Soul School that we're building. And this school model is a world changing school model. It's the first school that I'm aware of that is financially self-reliant and really self-reliant in every way. 
the students will grow their own food, they'll create their own school lunches, and then when they're done with their own self-reliance here, they will go into their parents' yards, their families' homes, and they'll create self-reliance for their families. When they're done with that, then they help the community become self-reliant. And it's a business, right? It's a business where they learn entrepreneurship. They learn how to live in a world and create value. And voluntarism is the foundation of everything we do. So they will get paid for the value. They will run the nursery here and they will propagate plants and people will love to pay and buy from this school because of the value that the students in the school is providing for our society. It's gonna be incredible and it's scalable and this is important. No NDAs, no, no BS, we don't have any patents. Everything we do is to serve and it's open source. And as a result of that energy, the abundance is coming back exponentially. It's beautiful. So, I'm gonna take these eggs out. Uh, yeah. McKinley, you wanna grab some eggs? All right, brother. <laughs> I don't want her pecking any more eggs. I'm gonna have to keep track of you. There, <laughs> there we go. So, this is a temporary chicken area. Eventually, we are creating habitat that the chickens don't need cages. In fact, did you know chickens like to go to the highest part of a tree? So we're gonna be creating the habitat so the chickens can get out of the way of predators at night and they can go hide in their perches. So anyway, I think it's gonna be beautiful having no cages in this place. Hey, turkey. So over here is our beehives. My friends, this is not the typical farm. This is so easy to manage. The chickens take maybe an average of five to 10 minutes a day to, to maintain. And how much return on investment do we get for that five or 10 minutes a day? We get over a dozen eggs a day, and now with all the babies coming, we've got a bunch of meat coming. So the return on that five or 10 minutes a day is, is really exponential. And the bees are even better. These beehives we put in here about nine or 10 months ago. And in the first six or seven months, we've already got 30 pounds of honey. It's mind blowing, it's so amazing. And not only did we get honey, but the bees are going out and pollinating all of our plants and our fruit trees. And they add that extra layer of beauty. And then when you wanna come meditate and come sit, in fact, um, I'm, I'm happy Berwick, I was listening to Jeff Berwick talk about Shunyamurti uh, Sat Yoga, and I've been following him ever since doing a lot more meditation these days, and this is one of the best places to meditate. There's something about sitting next to a beehive. You can feel the vibration of it. You can feel the frequency, the energy of it. And coming out here a couple times a day and just sitting for five or 10 minutes. You know, Tesla said, if you wanna find the secrets to the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. But there's a word that was misplaced there. Don't think, feel. If you wanna find the secrets to the universe, if you wanna experience the secrets of the universe, then feel the energy, feel the frequency, feel the vibration all around you at scale. When you start doing this and silencing your mind, you know, government is the problem. Mind control is what we're all fighting against but let's stop fighting and simply live in the present. I know it sounds corny, but the present is the gift from God. This moment is where all the real is. When we can silence our mind and let go of the programs that have held
held us down in slavery for all these centuries. Let go of the mind control and the programs and center ourselves again. Bring our energy from the thinking mind, the past, to our heart and our stomach. We're more powerful. We can affect change in a better way and we can rise up to the frequency. The base frequency of freedom is faith and courage. something out here. Look at this sand. That is, there's not much life in that sand. So that's what we started with. 16 months ago, this area that we're going to now was Florida sand. It was white sugar sand with almost no life in it. Why? Because this area was pasture and then we wanted to build the area up to keep it out of the flood zone. And we had a 500 year flood um, in October and that fence was, there was flood up to a foot of that fence. We were about six feet out of the water here. And that was a massive flood for Florida. So this land came from a hole we dug over here, a pond we dug. So most of it came from about 10 feet underground, which meant it didn't have much life in it. So what's, what I'm gonna show you next blows my mind every day. So this is the start of our permaculture pathway from the lakeside. Check out that lake, 430 acre private lake. It feels to, miraculous to me that we're sitting on the lake with the only dock on this lake, 45 minutes from the Orlando International Airport. We've got our dragon fruit trellises here and all sorts of different support species and loads of bananas. And this area here is our living salad bar. You can come in here anytime. Mm. That's way better than any lettuce you buy at the store. This is um, Okinawa spinach. We have, oh, this is a fun one. This is a legitimate toilet paper plant. It's called Cuban oregano. It smells amazing, it's soft, it's durable, and it's antiseptic. All right, this is Moringa the tree of life, the miracle tree, more vitamin C than an orange, more potassium than a banana, more calcium than milk, more protein than an egg, by weight in these leaves. We've got sweet potatoes all through here, seminal pumpkins, and um, longevity spinach. You put all this stuff together, you've got the healthiest salad you've ever had in your life. And then for some color and taste, you add the cranberry hibiscus. Look at the shape of that beautiful creature. Mm. That's one of my favorites. If you haven't had cranberry hibiscus, I suggest growing some. It's so easy. And now to propagate this, this is, dude, this is just amazing. If you want to start a new cranberry hibiscus plant, you take up one of these, you cut it off, you stick in the ground, you've got a new plant. Nature is infinitely abundant. Right? The lie that we've been told is of fear and scarcity. That's the ultimate poison in our world that somehow we are overpopulated. Bullshit. It's the ultimate lie is that humans are the problem. Now, we have to take responsibility. Have we been part of the problem? Absolutely. The half truth is that, you know, that what the deep state and what all these wicked people around the world want us to think is that we are the problem and we should feel ashamed. We should feel humiliated. We should feel bad about ourselves. No, we are the stewards of this land. When we start, and it's so simple, when we take out the poisons and grow food instead of lawns, right? We've done no maintenance here for 16 months, uh, except for we've trimmed the pathway, right? And I, I eventually, I was just telling Carlos, I don't even wanna trim the pathway. It is, this is way better to walk on than this. So let's just have the perennial peanut cover it and we'll have a perennial peanut pathway. <laughs> so again, 
this doesn't have to be any maintenance. If you want a fancy landscape that fits your HOA guidelines, then sure, you can make it fancy looking. You can have it designed to be really pretty to the eye. Now, I think this is way better to the eye. You know, people say money doesn't grow on trees. They don't have a freaking clue. Wealth grows on trees. So what our job is right now is to compost the fiat. When we compost billions of dollars of fiat and we turn that into the Garden of Eden and food forests everywhere, we solve all of the world's biggest problems. Mass extinction, deforestation, cancer, diabetes, heart disease. We end world hunger and we end tyranny. And we end the tools of tyranny, taking away the fear and the scarcity model and then the weaponized food supply, the poisoned food supply, when we simply take the poisons out and grow food instead of lawns, we solve all of the world's biggest problems. Mm. Longevity spinach is another one of my favorites. Mm. My partner Marcel is an art lover and he somehow found this piece of art, saw it in a magazine and he said, Jim, we got to have this at Golf's Landing. So he bought it, sent it over from South Africa. This is a piece of art by an artist named Hank Willis Thomas, who suffered through the apartheid in South, A South Africa. And who controlled South Africa? Well, of course, the crown. And this symbolizes the force and violence of government. Right? This is, I think this is like a British police baton. And this is the farmer's arm saying we no longer comply with your bullshit right so um, now this device here this is I don't know how to explain this real well because I don't get it like it's Tesla esque it's an atmospheric harmonizer and it was sold to me as a device that could help bust up chemtrails and help create um, a, a higher vibration a frequency in the atmosphere and when we put it in the ground and we plugged it in, it's got a little uh, nine volt battery. I looked up in the sky to observe the chemtrails. And I, there was a plane, and this is on film. I took a film of this. And there's a plane coming right over the middle. And above us, the chemtrail was dispersed by 60 or 70% from about 30 degrees that way to about 30 degrees that way. I don't know how that happened. I don't know if it was a coincidence or a fluke, but I'm glad I have this thing. And this from Essential Energy, my buddy Dan, this is an EMF um, disperser somehow. Again, I don't know how to explain this stuff. I'm glad I have it though. In fact, um, we were at dinner here a few weeks ago in Spokane, Washington. I was at a science fair put on by Aaron uh, Murakami. And there's magic going on there. Free energy, Tesla's energy is not a hypothetical, it's a demonstrable fact, right? It's not, and it, guess what? It doesn't violate any of God's laws. It's just a recognition or an awareness of the energy that's all around us all the time. So this device here from Essential Energy, we were at dinner the other night. I was uh, with Dan and I, and then General Blaine Holt came to visit us. He was about 20 minutes late. But anyway, so Dan brought a plate and he said, Jim, try your wine before you put it on the plate. So I tried my wine and it was normal wine. And at the end, it had a little bit of a bitterness to it. He said, okay, now put it on the plate. Put it on the plate for a minute. He said, now try your wine. I tried it. It was noticeably different. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it's a fact that it was different. So then Blano comes, he's more of a wine connoisseur. And he, we did the same thing. He's, before he even sipped it, he smelled it after putting it on the plate and he goes, I can't, it's different. He tasted it, he's like, oh my God. This is a, a, a very um, interesting EMF device and this has got tensor technology and organite. And uh, anyway, if you wanna know more about these, I can introduce you to the guys that brought them to me. This is where I sit and do podcasts, right here. 
A lot of them. I was just on with Mike Adams on a couple different shows. I sit right there, do the podcast in the in the food forest. It lifts my spirits. It lifts the energy.